This miniature was primed black with an airbrush, followed by a general spray of Vallejo's dark aluminum, and then a zenithal spray of silver and a lesser zenithal spray of aluminum. You do not need an airbrush for this step and can use dry brushing instead, which I did for the first three Necron painting videos I did. In the Necron Warriors video, I dry brushed one model and airbrushed the other nine, and in the end you cannot tell the difference. Links to these videos should be in the top right, but in case it's not, they are also listed in the description. I chose to use the airbrush mainly due to the size of this miniature, as dry brushing would take longer, though admittedly not much longer. Also, I have an airbrush, so I prefer to use it whenever possible. For the most part, I'll be retreading the same ground as in the other videos, but there are some slight tweaks that I've made that I would recommend over the previous ones, so watching this video may still be worth your time. I start with the dark steely metal areas first, as those will comprise of most of the hard to reach places. These sections will be done with an application of Tyrian Navy as a general base coat, and after it dries, a second Tyrian Navy application will be added to the lower portions to create shadows. I would also like to point out that generally I do not paint models before assembling them. However, if I had to repaint this model again, I would probably do it before assembly. Painting beneath the larger shoulder shields was very difficult without getting the speed paint all over the areas I did not want that color. However, any overbrush can be cleaned up with a little bit of silver paint. The khaki-ish and orange metals are painted in the same manner as the Tyrian Navy. One paint to base coat giving a general tint, and the second to add selective shadows in the lower and more recessed areas. The only real difference is that for the orange metals, I added a little more shadow with an additional application of red. Just be careful with this last one, as a little goes a long way, and it's easy to go overboard and tint the overall color red instead of the intended orange. Also, don't forget to allow enough time between applications of speed paint, so that the previous coat is fully dry and doesn't tear up as you apply the next. With everything dry, I mix together Mr. Weathering's Multi Black and Solvent and apply this as a pen wash everywhere. This stuff is magic and will naturally flow into the deeper recesses. If you do get too heavy with it, it can pull on the surface, so just go slow and barely touch it near where you want it. I generally go for a mix where it will run easily down the side of the mixing surface, but darkly stain the recesses of my wrinkly, geezer old mad mittens. I then apply it to every crack, crevice, and recess that will not be glowing in the end. The next two steps is where the majority of this painting project went. I edge highlight everything, especially the places that'll be glowing, as the OSL will easily tint the silver paint. First I do this with the silver paint that I used in the first few steps, and then I do it again with the aluminum, with the latter highlight only being applied to the upward facing edges. I then decided to use this same aluminum paint to add small hatching lines everywhere. The additional edge highlight and hatching scratches is a step that I did not do in the previous Necron videos, and I'd probably not add those to the smaller miniatures anyway. 
but because this one is so large, I can add a ton of small lines for dings and scratches without losing the overall color of the base coats due to the sheer size of each section. This was a painstaking and time consuming venture as I had to be careful to go slow that I did not accidentally add lines that were too big. In the end, I feel it was worth the time and effort. The edge highlight and hatching steps took so long that I almost watched the entire season of Archive 81 while doing so. And admittedly, I am pissed that they cancelled it after one season. I won't show the steps for the hanging cables or the base in this video to save some time, so let's skip to the last part and what has become my favorite step when painting Necrons, namely the green glowing parts. The green glow, at least to me, is what defines the Necrons, at least the Sherikin Dynasty anyway. This is a second departure I made from the previous Necron models I painted as I added a slight application of a gloss varnish between each step try to make the larger round section smoother in the end. With that said, I wouldn't do this with the smaller miniatures, as that much varnish, even thinned, would likely fill areas that you wouldn't want filled, and you may lose some of the definition. But on the large spheres of this model, it's not an issue. This is a very short process and is basically an off-white base coat, a splash of thin gilly do speed paint as a base color, matte white mixed with gloss medium to create a central circle, followed by a jungle green unthinned to add the final vibrant green. If you add a light coat of gloss varnish after each of those four steps, then you have what I did here. This is the end result. I'm really happy with how this one came out except for all of the cables. I think I'm just going to have to repaint those. I really do not like them and it's bothering me even as I type this script out. Other than that, I'm glad I spent so much time with the aluminum scratches as it makes this vehicle look worn and beat up. For lessons learned, my cables suck and I need to come up with an entirely different idea or painting scheme. Also, for large models like this, painting some of the areas prior to final assembly would definitely be worth it. And most importantly, and worst of all, my usual technique of adding a little gloss varnish before priming to fill small gaps and holes did not work at all on the main battery. You can clearly see the segmentation right down the center. I should have used Milliput to fill this massive gap. 
And that'll bring this video to its inevitable conclusion. I hope you learned something or were inspired to start or expand your own collection of Warhammer 40k miniatures. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content of this video and would like to see more, you can support this channel by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time, and I bid you a fond farewell. Until the next video.